In this video, I'm going to give you an explanation as to how things can look, how they can feel, and how they can function within Wingard. One of the key things to mention, firstly, is that everything pretty much can be customized within Wingard. We can change the tabs, we can change the look, we can change the feel. So one example of this would be the design function. Currently, you'll see that we're using the Arctic flat version of Wingard. However, if we were to select another one, my favorite being the dark flat version, you'll see that the customization completely changes. This can be defined by user or via site or via a user profile. Um, as to which version the user will use. It can also be beneficial when we have users who have issues uh, such as color blindness, where we can change the look and feel of the software to accommodate them people. The next part I would like to show is the bars down the left hand side. Now, the first thing to mention here is the locations. So everything within the locations and within the data points is based upon a tree structure. Locations are simply areas or cities or buildings within an organization or within a city. Give an example here, we have company. Company then has three blocks of buildings. So if I was to click on company, you'll see an overview of the site. Again, this doesn't have to be a 3D model, but it can be if required. Again, fully customizable by the user. If we were to then click on the administration block, we would simply get a drill down into the administration block and immediately we've been brought into the first floor. Now what you'll see in front of you is a CAD plan. On here we can show the layers, so if we wanted to introduce a fire alarm system layer, or an intruder system layer, or a CCTV layer, you'll see that all of these things appear on the CAD plan, and what you'll notice is they all are set in specific colours. If these were to go into fault mode, for example, then this would be shown and the icon color would change and flash if relevant. We can also add quick buttons to this area. The quick buttons can be pretty much for anything, but in this instance, it's for setting and unsetting or locking down areas using the intruder system. So if we were to click unlock within an area, you would see how that unlocks. As I said, all of these functions are simply tree structures and it allows the user really simplistic access and most people are very familiar with the tree structure. Below the locations, then we have the data points. Data points, as you can see, again, using a tree structure can be drilled down into company or into retail and then we can see the cameras within these different environments. Again, these would be broken down based on the customer location structure. Now, what we can show is if we were to go into company, for example, you'll notice that the headings disappear and it just shows the data points which are available within company. If again, we were to drill down further and say just the first floor, we would see the list shrink again and it, down here, the data points would be just shown for within that first floor. So the filtering is made really, really easy for an operator perspective. If we go back to the top, again, coming back a little bit to locations for a second. What we can also have if there is requirement, for example, within a worldwide project, is we have data segmentation. Within these segments can be multiple locations each, but what we can do here is give the ability to segment data. So for example, within San Francisco, if you only wanted the data for the American sites, then you could simply just have that segmented onto that server. And it would ensure that all of the data is segmented correctly across the board and across the system. Across on the right hand side now you'll see as normal that we've got location based data in this tab as it says at the top but on the next tab along we have some dashboard based data. Now these dashboards are fully configurable um, in this instance, this is a example around a client that is worldwide. And across here, we can see the data based right across the world. And as you'll see, we're pushing data in here to give a flavor of how this could look dependent on how data changes. If we drill down into one of the sites, what you'll see is a little more data on this particular site the event types, the percentage of events for the whole across the sites, the reaction times of the operators and the completion time. Now this is just data that's selected for the specific site. However, this can be changed on at random depending on what is required. Also, what we have here is the ability to use GIS. 
And within this, we can use a series of different types of maps from Google Maps and soon to be OpenStreetMaps and Esri. Across here on the right, what you have the ability to do is create a series of quick buttons, again, fully customizable so that you can simply drill into the different sites. As you can see, these are currently just set for the advances sites, in particular this one here in the UK, but then we can click on Austria and drill into there. These maps are fully zoomable, fully movable, and work interactively with camera icons, etc. Last but not least, and the most probably one of the most important parts of the Wingard layout is the event bar. The event bar is customizable, so you can have different tabs along the bottom to define the different areas that you would like to cover, i.e., for example, if within message you just had access control events, then you could quite simply just call this tab access control and only access control events would be shown within that tab. Dependent here on this instance is the priority. So within this tab here, we have a priority three, but the alarms, which are the higher priority events, uh, in this example is priority seven, and they would immediately jump to the top of the queue. What I'm going to show you here is just how an event would look within Wingard. Now, this can, again is fully customizable. On this instance, what we have just above the event bar is the event log, and everything that happens, such as accepting the event, is shown within the event log. We also have attachments, which allows for things such as video clips, documents, still images, all to be attached into this section. We also have bookmarks. Bookmarks can be automatically created to allow quick review of footage. And up here, as you can see above that, we have the CAD plan of the site, but we also have some quickly embedded CCTV images so the user can get a quick overview of what is happening at this current point. Again, we could also have a secondary graphic, which could be a more drilled down version of the CAD plan to give a deeper in-depth view of where the perimeter has been broken in this instance. Across on the right here, we have the workflow data. This is the static workflow data across on the top here. However, below that is what we refer to as our dynamic workflows. These workflows will change depending on the answers that the operator has given at any one time. So it allows real flexibility and for the operators to only have to put in the relevant data that is relevant to that event that they're dealing with. And that really is a good introduction of the overlay of Wingard. As I said, everything can be customized. However, this is how it looks as a standard output.